that you turn blue with anger. I was briefly listening to the Timcast IRL video from last night, a segment where they talk about how we need decentralization of the internet. Now, I have for a very long time thought that this was a wonderful idea because the truth of the matter is, as they say and have said in hacker culture for a very long time, information wants to be free. Locking up information behind paywalls, various access methods, that kind of stuff, it just stops the information from being disseminated on a temporary basis. But as we can see with things like WikiLeaks, Information wants to be free. People want information. Now here's where you're going to run into a problem. I have to argue against decentralization, against my own idea, the thing that I like. Because there are some things that aren't considered. When people talk about decentralization and they talk about anti-censorship tactics, think about everything that's censored. Yes, it is terrible. Absolutely terrible that large tech companies are deciding what you get to hear and see and read. But here's the problem. Those big tech companies censor a lot of things, and you're looking at the things that you want to see and hear but aren't. What you're not looking at is what you generally don't see and hear for the most part. So here's where it gets ugly. I need to talk about a few things that are uncomfortable. But this has to be considered. Once you have a network that is truly decentralized, things get ugly. How ugly? Child porn can't be removed. That's probably the most extreme end of it. If you have a network that is truly robust against information being stopped, against information censorship, child pornography is a form of information. It is pictures, video, etc. All composed of the same bits and bytes that those cute cat pictures are composed of, but rearranged in a different order that produces something that the vast majority of people find rather horrifically despicable and think should be censored. Indeed, must be censored. If you have a truly decentralized, robust network that prevents information from being destroyed, that prevents censorship successfully, it will prevent all censorship, including the worst pieces of data that exist. The things that twist your morality so hard in the titty that you turn blue with anger. And it's not just kitty porn either. It's stuff like doxing, harassment, death threats, the usual, but also leaked credit card information, leaked bank account information, leaked private information. If someone were to scan your medical documents that say that you have herpes and upload it to Facebook, it would probably get removed fairly quickly because that's a huge violation of privacy. But if you upload it to this robust network, well now, scanned documented proof that you have herpes is out there for everyone. Everyone. And it can never, ever be removed. See, the problem with decentralized, robust networks of information is that while they make information truly free, they make information truly free without discrimination against any type of information. No censorship means all information suddenly becomes free. It means things that you really don't want out there can now propagate and you can't stop it. The other problem comes with law enforcement. This is where the decentralization angle starts to become a problem due to child pornography being illegal. If you have a network that cannot be censored, it will be used to distribute child pornography. If that network is used to do so, then that network now becomes, guess what? An illegal porn distribution network. 
and law enforcement will come after it. And law enforcement will come after you if you are using it. This is one of the reasons that it's not realistically possible under any legal framework that I know of to create a truly decentralized, robust network. This is sort of the elephant in the room of information freedom that no one seems to want to talk about. But we have to talk about it. If you want true information freedom, you have to accept that the worst, most horrific information suddenly is free. Google removed Parler from the Play Store, saying that the terms don't do enough to stop people from inciting violence, saying that the, the Google Play Store has terms of service that require that any website or whatever app have terms of service on their end that'll censor all this dangerous stuff. You know, danger being relative, of course. And you think it's bad when it's just you know, conservative opinion or fringe opinion, um, banned elsewhere opinion, moving over there and just talking, not actually inciting violence. You think that the Google censorship is bad of that. You imagine if you have a true decentralized, robust information freedom network that freely allows kitty porn to propagate. How do you think that's going to end? So I've presented the problem and I'd love to present a solution, but there really isn't a solution. Unfortunately, there are two paths you can choose. You can accept the censorship that we're currently dealing with, or you can allow the most gut-wrenching, despicable, horrific, morally questionable material to proliferate, because that's what happens when there is no censorship. So it's a tough choice. It's a very tough choice. Do you allow censorship or not? It comes down to that. Only you can answer that question for yourself. How comfortable are you really? How comfortable are you letting information go free, but then having that include some of the worst stuff in the world, along with some of the stuff that needs to be free and isn't? Can you make that compromise? I don't think that a decentralized information network can succeed because of this choice. Because if you allow really bad stuff to propagate, law enforcement will step on you. Now, this is not just a situation where I'm talking out of my ass, where I've just randomly come up with this stuff, where I've spewed that, oh, this will happen and this won't happen. Look up a network called Freenet. F-R-E-E-N-E-T. It's very different today. But previously, Freenet would store information on users' computers, and then Freenet would allow people to basically search a decentralized network of information. You could publish information to Freenet, you could fish around Freenet, and it was all stored in this giant blob of data on everyone's computer. If you ran the client, you had to dedicate a few gigs of storage to storing stuff that was sent out to the network. Freenet became a distribution medium for kiddie porn, and the feds started chasing people down with it and cracking down on it. Freenet was forced to change the way that it works to where you don't get to join an information network by default. You have to manually add your friends. So now, instead of having this sort of global decentralization model, Freenet has a peer-to-peer -peer private model which causes information to not be shared between the cells. This does two things. One, it makes it so that if you get on it, you don't have access to information from all the other private groups, which kind of defeats the point of this decentralization. But two, more importantly, now the people who wanted to distribute that bad stuff are in smaller private groups that are even harder to find. This always happens whenever you crack down on the distribution of something. You make it illegal, you restrict it in some way. People find a way, but they scurry to the corners of the room, the dark corners. They hide what they're doing. They break off into smaller cells, and they do their distribution in smaller areas. So, what I see happening with any attempt to replace Freenet with another global 
globally available decentralized, robust information sharing network is someone's going to distribute kitty porn on it, and that's the end of it. Because once that happens, and it can't be clawed back, you can't censor it, you can't stop it, your network's screwed. Everyone will come after you. Even if you don't look at it, a blob of that information might get stored locally to your computer without your knowledge, and the feds will break your freaking door down. And that's the problem. That's why information can't be free in our society. I don't really have a good conclusion to this discussion, but I wanted to present that information and put those questions in your mind because if Tim Pool's bringing it up and Tim Pool's got 907,000 subscribers for his podcast alone, then it's a big deal at this point. And people are talking more about it in the wake of the situation where all the conservatives are getting shut up. Trump's been banned from Twitter and so on. So this topic is ripe today. But a lot of people aren't considering the end. Where does it go? You don't just free up one thing, you free up all things. What does that entail? And are we willing as a society to let go of tight control over the most reprehensible kind of information in order to allow all the other information to be free. It's a very difficult decision, particularly if you're someone who's been silenced and you want to see that information free. Good luck out there. I can't make the choice for you. It has to be all of you, individually, coming together to a common conclusion. And right now, that conclusion is censorship, and it'll probably stay that way for the foreseeable future. For the reasons outlined above, what do you think? I want you to type a comment below. If you've made it this far, I want to know what you think about this problem. And do you see any other way out? Let's have a nice, robust discussion down below. Take care. <laughs>